What's up, Coalition? It's KK here, back with some more Phoenix Right, East Attorney. Last episode, we started the final trial for Turnabout Goodbyes. We cross-examined a parrot, and we got Edgeworth found not guilty. However, the trial is not over. It will be over in this episode, however. So, let's get into it. Got me some orange juice, and we're ready to go. Save point. <clears throat> Alright, said this, but I'll say it again. That is all. The court is adjourned. Objection! What? Did, did someone just say objection? It wasn't Von Karma. Wait, but that means... No. Edgeworth! Your Honor, I object to your judgment. <laughs> yeah, that's a new Pyrozoo saying. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm not innocent at all. As we have heard, Yanni Yogi killed Robert Hammond in revenge. But, revenge for what? Nick! Edgeworth is trying to confess. He's going to say he's guilty. He's going to tell them he was the murderer in the DL6 incident. He's going to tell them he killed his own dad. No, duh. Uh-oh. What am I going to do? Raise an objection, of course. The judgment has already been passed. I object to Edward's outburst. Ah. Didn't something like this happen yesterday, too? Or, <laughs> that was weird. I believe a certain witness raised an objection after a guilty verdict was passed. That would be Larry. We must hear this new statement. We must hear Miles Edgeworth. He's right. We have a duty to hear Mr. Edgeworth out. He was a kid. You can't convict him for something he did 15 freaking years ago. As a kid. Uh, whatever. For 15 years, I've had a recurring dream. A nightmare. It's only a nightmare. That's what I told myself. But now I know it wasn't a dream. Yanni Yogi wasn't the killer. You mean in the incident where your father died? From the distance of the shot, it wasn't suicide either. Everything was was as clear as day. The murderer. The criminal in the DL6 incident. It was me. Your Honor, I confess my guilt. I am guilty for DL6, the statute of limitations of which ends today. The culprit is me! Why are you pointing off into the distance then? <laughs> You're pointing at me! No! <laughs> Does that mean I'm Miles Edgeworth? Okay. Order! Order! This is certainly unexpected. The defendant declared innocent is confessing to a different crime. A crime for which the statute of limitations runs out today! I'm not really sure how I should deal with this. Ah, oh, my ear itches again! There. <laughs> bah! It's obvious. We hold a trial. Right here. Right now. We tried this man for his crime of 15 years ago. Okay, I think I think I would like to take a five minute recess. During this time, I will consider the appropriate course of action to take. Court is adjourned. This ain't looking good. I'm sorry, right? I've just wasted all your effort. No duh. Mr. Edgeworth, I just don't believe it, pal. I mean, you kill your dad? I didn't want to believe it myself, Detective. But it's the truth. I deserve to be punished. What, for an accident that you did as a child? That's not... M oh my god, this game! Then again, it is based on the Japanese legal system, so I'm not really surprised. <laughs> 
Murder is murder, no matter what the circumstances. No, it is not. Stupid game legal system. Mm. This is crazy! Just crazy! Nick? What are you doing? Huh? Oh. I was just reading through the court record once more. I'm getting my case ready. Your case? For what? Uh-huh. Isn't it obvious? I'm gonna prove that My Miles Edgeworth is innocent. What are you talking about, pal? He just admitted to it! He confessed that he did it in court. I'm sorry, Edgeworth, but I don't believe your nightmare. What? It's just a dream. It's not real. The truth is right here in this court record. In any case, tighten your belts. The real fight is just beginning. I'll prove your innocence. Trust me. Right. Number 28, 2.30 p.m. Then, I would like to resume our trial. Judge. Miles Edgeworth has admitted his own guilt. He has confessed his crime. Let us begin by hearing his testimony. Then, though pointless, let the defense do their cross-examining. The statute of limitations on the DL6 incident runs out today. Though it's unconventional for me, I like to run this one by the book. I see. Does the defense have any objections? Nope. No, your honor. On karma. You knew this was going to happen from the very beginning, didn't you? Very well. Well, Miles Edgeworth, take the stand. Uh, hold on just one second, guys. Okay. <clears throat> Will the witness state his name and profession? Miles Edgeworth. I am a prosecuting attorney. Mr. Edgeworth, fifteen years ago you mistakenly killed your father, Gregory Edgeworth. Is this correct? No. It is correct. You can testify about this matter to the court. Edgeworth was telling me about this dream yesterday. I noticed something. One detail didn't quite fit. That will be the key. But only if I can get it to work. Please! Please! God dang his ears! Ah! Stop itching! For that day, I had gone to the courtroom to observe one of my father's trials. As we went to leave, an earthquake struck, trapping us in the elevator. My father and Mr. Yogi lost their composure and began to argue. Just then, Something heavy fell at my feet. I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted them to stop fighting. A moment later, there was a single gunshot, then a scream. It was a terrible scream. I remember it to this day. It's kind of strange. If he was shot in the heart, he wouldn't have had time to scream. So, yeah. That's all. They overlooked this fact, didn't they? Mm-hmm. Hmm. And, until now, you thought this memory was a, was a dream? We were stuck in the elevator for five hours. The oxygen in the elevator ran out, and I lost my memory of the events. Bah! Same claim Mr. Yogi has made. Very well. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, boy, I don't remember this testimony one little bit. Okay, we don't care about that. Okay, my father lost their composure. Let's ask him about that, just for the hell of it. What did you do then? I was a nine-year-old boy at the time. What could I do? I was scared, trembling in the corner. But then... Oh, <laughs> 
Just then, something heavy fell at my feet. Okay. I'm just gonna press him up from this point on just to see. What was it? A pistol. I assume it was the bailiff, Yanni Yogi's. The safety must have come off when it fell from his holster. You picked it up. What happened next? I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. Okay. And did you know it was a pistol when you threw it? I think I knew. I knew it was dangerous. But the air was getting so thick, I panicked. So, you're saying that you threw the pistol at Mr. Yogi? I was in a daze. A moment later, there was a single gunshot and then a scream. The gun fired once? Yes. I think, after I threw it, I lost consciousness. Since then, they've echoed in my head every day. That gunshot and that horrible scream. The scream. It was a terrible scream. Alright. To this day? Yes, I can practically hear it now. I doubt I will ever forget that scream as long as I live. There it is. One part of that testimony clearly contradicts the evidence. But I don't know what it means. I better find out and quick. Okay. I know what it is. Okay. There was a single gunshot. However, let me see here. Aha! A single gunshot, huh? You got one in his chest and one in the elevator window. Objection! Objection, yes. So, there was only one gunshot. Yes, I'm sure of that. I heard the shot and the scream. Then everything faded. I was unconscious until the rescuers came. I see. It must have been scary. Look at this photograph. This is a photograph of the scene of the crime 15 years ago. There is a clear contradiction between your testimony and this picture. I can see that the victim laying there is Gregory Edgeworth. What do you mean, contradiction? As always, the judge is clueless. Show the judge a contradiction in the photo. Uh, yeah, right here. As should be obvious, the contradiction is here. I see a bullet hole in the door. Your Honor, Miles Edgeworth testifies that there was only one gunshot. However, according to this photograph, not one, but two shots were fired. One shot hit the victim, the other hit the elevator door. I ask you then, why did M Miles Edgeworth only hear one gunshot? This photograph does seem to confirm a second shot. However, when was a hole in the elevator made? It might have been there before the incident occurred. If it was there before, it has nothing to do with this incident. Urgh. Mr. Wright, do you have proof that this bullet hole was caused at the time of the incident? <sighs> well, let's check the court record really quick. Okay, where is... Okay, I need to check the files here. Elevator. No police found on the scene. Air and... Okay. The murder weapon was fired twice. Okay, it'd be even victim data then. Yes. Your Honor, I think I'll be able to show you proof. What? Impossible! Now, now, Mr. Monkarma. Save your surprise for after you've seen the evidence. Very well, Mr. Wright. Show us your proof. What do you have that proves the bullet hole in the door was related to this incident? Well, 
case file. Your Honor, the answer is in this file. You do enjoy dragging out that file, don't you? <laughs> I don't accept this evidence unless you can tell us what page it's on. Which page shows the link between the bullet hole and the DL6 infinite? Victim data. Look at the victim data in this file. It says, quite plainly, the murder weapon was fired twice. I can't believe they overlooked that. <laughs> Miles Edgeworth only heard one gunshot. Yet the murder weapon was fired twice. Oh, order! Order! Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? It's simple, Your Honor. At the time of the incident, two shots were fired. One went into Gregory Edwards' heart. The other hit the elevator door. Remember that the defendant lost consciousness, consciousness after the f shot he fired rang out. In conclusion, we must agree that the second shot was fired by someone else. M Mr. Wright! But who could that someone else be? The murderer, of course. Heh. <laughs> I wonder why he interrupted us there. I knew I should have stopped, stepped in before your wild fantasies got out of hand. Mr. Wright. Look once more at the DL6 incident case file. Look closely. Try the case summary page. The case summary. That's on page one. Look what is written there. Not a single clue was found on the scene. If the pistol had indeed been fired two times, then, there, then the other bullet would have been discovered on the scene. He does have a point. The second bullet has never been found. I know why! Why? Because the second bullet does not exist. The bullet that claimed Gregory Edwards' life was the only one was the one fired by his own son. That is the truth of this matter, the whole truth. It was undoubtedly something else that made that bullet hole in the door. Evidence speaks against your claim, buddy boy. Order! I will have order. Mr. Wright has proven one thing to us quite clearly that the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. However, as Mr. Von Karma says, the second bullet fired was not found. It is highly unlikely that the police merely overlooked the second bullet. So, all we have is the single bullet fired. I'm afraid I have to discount... yes, discount the defense's claim. I praise a judge for his wisdom in this matter. Ah! How did this happen? I don't believe that the second bullet didn't exist. Was I wrong? Have I been wrong about this whole incident? No. What are you doing, Nick? Why aren't you raising an objection? I'm sorry, Maya. What? I... It... Uh, it... It looks like I was wrong. Nick? If the second bullet wasn't there, then all my conjectures were for nothing. No. But you said you'd do it, Nick! You said you'd get Edward declared innocent! I'm sorry. It's just, when I saw the photograph, I thought that two shots had been fired. Yeah, there were. I was so certain of it. I thought I'd won. I thought there was another person, someone else who fired the killing shot. But now, I was wrong to think it could be that simple. This case has stood unsolved for 15 years. Nick. <clears throat> well, it seems that we have finally cleared up this incident. Only one bullet was found at the scene of the crime. That shot was fired by Miles Edgeworth. Precisely. I would like to ask one thing of Miles Edgeworth before passing my verdict. Have you been paying attention to the trial so far? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any objections? No. No, I do not. 
so you killed your father, though that was not your intention. Yes, I did. Oh no! He's confessing! Very well. The statute of limitations on the murder of Gregory Edwards runs out today. Yes, we've established that several times already. Therefore, I must pronounce a verdict of the defendant today, right here. Right now. Indeed. Does anyone have any objections? I've been here before. It's just like my first day in court. There are so many things I know I should be saying. But my mind's gone blank. I can't find the words. Mr. Wright? Okay, uh, it doesn't matter what you say. I think if you say, uh... Well, there is no evidence to speak of, so we're saying no objections. Every lead I thought I, ha I had has been squashed. This is really the end. Edgeworth, I'm sorry. I closed my eyes. What was it that I had been doing all this time? Wasn't my whole life leading up to today? But now that I'm here, I know I failed. Maya, or Mia, I'm sorry. Not. Not yet. What? Uh huh. Maya? What? Object! Your only weapon. Uh, are you okay, Nick? Uh, are you okay, Nick? What's happening to me? I have to think. Wait. Don't think. Act. Objection. Your Honor. I... I object. <clears throat> Mr. Wright, on what grounds do you object, hmm? Mm. Nick? I... I don't know. This case is perfect. Oh no. Ah! It must exist. The second bullet. <clears throat> what? What did you just say? N nothing. The second bullet must exist. But where? Someone took it. <clears throat> Hold on one second. Alright, I'm good. It seems waiting is not going to produce us any answers from Mr. Wright. <clears throat> Wait, Your Honor! Hmm? I, uh... The, the second bullet! It, uh... It exists! What? We've just heard proof that it did not exist! I... I realize that, Your Honor. I'm really grasping here. It, it's just, someone took it from the scene of the crime. That's what happened. But who? The, 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 the murderer! The murderer? Then tell us just who is this murderer. I am still thinking about that one. Hmm. So the criminal took the second bullet. Why would he? Huh? Why would it always be a he? It could have been a she. I said, I already said, huh? <laughs> huh? First of all, how would he have found it? It's not easy to find a stray bullet, Mr. Wright. Was there some pressing need for the murderer to search for that bullet? The murderer didn't need it. Why would the murderer have spent the time looking for that stray bullet? I haven't got a clue! What's wrong, Mr. Wright? Uh, um... Bah. The murderer had no reason to take that bullet. You don't want to admit it, but it's true. Urgh. Had to take it. Had to take it? The murderer? What does that mean? You're thinking too normal. Think crazy. Don't think why the bullet was taken. Think why the bullet had to be taken. Mr. Wright? Y yes, Your Honor. I have no idea what I'm doing. 
Uh, uh, well, the murderer had no intention of taking the bullet from the scene. But, uh, the murderer had to take that bullet. Had to, Mr. Wright? What do you mean? Well, for instance... For instance, what? Uh, maybe the bullet, uh, hit the murderer? The bullet hit the murderer? J just saying, for instance... I mean, if it hit you, you would have to take it with you, wouldn't you? It's not like you could perform surgery right there. Y you know? <laughs> Same thing happened in third trial. Wait a second. I was just talking off the top of my head, but what if that's really what happened? Let me get this straight. So at the time of the murder, the murderer himself was shot. And he was left with a second bullet still inside? Thus leaving only one bullet at the scene of the crime? Uh, yes, I guess that's how it would work, yes. But there's a problem with that! The other two people rescued from the elevator! Miles Edwards and Yanni Yogi were both unharmed. So that would mean... The murderer came from outside, yes. The two men fight inside the elevator. Trying to stop them, the boy picks up the pistol at his feet and throws it. Doesn't tell you who's talking, but the pistol discharges in the bullet. The bullet goes through the elevator door and hits the murderer outside. The boy loses consciousness. Then, the murderer opens the elevator door and sees the men inside. I'm surprised he didn't kill all three of them. Well, there's only one bullet, so... I think there's only one bullet. Hmm... Mr. Wright, you are truly the most unpredictable defense attorney I've ever known. I can tell you're grasping, yet I cannot deny the possibility of what you say. What are you saying? Deny it! Deny it! No one involved with the incident was wounded. There was no murderer. Hmm. No one was wounded at the time of the incident. He's right. I can't think of anyone. Hey, Nick? Uh-huh. I just thought of something really crazy. Crazy? Remember what Mr. Grossberg said yesterday? Gregory Edwards dealt a blow to this perfect trial record. <laughs> wow! It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. Yes, yeah, an unusual event for the man. That was the first and the last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. Why did Von Karma didn't take that vacation because of shock? But took it because he was injured! Which would mean... It could only mean one thing! He was a murderer in the DL6 incident! He was a man who shot Gregory Edworth! It, w it was from Karma! Oh, man! Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? You seem dazed. Uh, n no your honor. Well? You have indicated the possibility that, it, that the murderer came from outside. Can you give us the name of your suspect? Uh-oh. Should I come out and say it now? Say it now! Your Honor, there is a suspect. One lone suspect. Wow, this is certainly interesting news. Very well, Mr. Wright. Who is your suspect? B -b -b uh, my hands are shaking. V what? Von Karma! Von Karma?! <laughs> you mean THE Von Karma? The prosecutor? Sitting right there? Bah. You don't object? <laughs> I see no need. Why honor this ridiculous outburst of my objection? Because you took a vacation for several months starting the day after the incident. Yet you pride yourself on a perfect record. 
Why would you take such a long vacation without any reason? So you're claiming that I took a vacation to heal my injury from the incident. Fascinating. Prove it. I would have needed a surgery, no? Where did I go under the knife at, Mr. White? Bring the doctor that operated on me. Have him testify. Ugh. Nick! Let's find out who his doctor is. It's no use. Uh, Edgeworth? I know Von Karma. Perhaps too well. He's perfect. He wouldn't leave clues. He probably didn't undergo surgery. That would leave a doctor as a witness. Ugh. Nobody's that perfect. So, so what, Nick? Did Von Karma pull the bullet all by himself? That's insane! No, he couldn't have. You can't just pull bullets out of yourself. Uh, I suppose you could, but that'd be really painful. Wait. What does that mean? That bullet has to be somewhere. But where? Well, Mr. Wright? And you produce evidence to prove that I was shot? 